You suck. And we're here, week three, without Aaron. He is feeling under the weather this week. He made it two weeks, guys. Let's give him credit for that. Two more <laughs> weeks than I thought. I was just kidding, Aaron. Like, he sent in his pick for me. Here cause, you know, he was talking about it, and then just, no. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess uh, we're going to just skim over last. Uh, last night's shit fest of the Niners at the Giants. Wouldn't call it a shit. I would. <laughs> that game yeah. looked oh, it was so boring. I mean, it's about what you would expect. I think at this point, you know, Brock Purdy's the two TD machine. Around three hundred yards and two TDs. That's what Brock Purdy gives you. Mm, that... McCaffrey. Every everything on the San Fran side of the ball is a check mark as it should be, and then. The Giants, there's there's some work to do. The lack of a number one receiver for the Giants is just... Yeah, barely... Saquon being out, their number one wide receiver is kind of rough on them. I enjoyed the game last week, yeah, last night. Why? Is he a Literally, pretty? I think out of... No. I think as, as, out of everyone in this group, I think you're the only one that had fantasy implications. Because it was uh... the Giants getting their ass whooped. But, but I have four, yeah, I had fourteen on the Niners to clarify. I have fourteen on the Niners, but I also have fantasy application. I had George Kittle and uh, okay. Jake, Jake the God Moody, a top thirty fantasy player right now. <laughs> Jeez, how many how many points did he put up? Fourteen week one, fourteen week two, and twelve week th- uh, last night. I've been running the uh, the Saints kicker Blake Grupp, and he's put up twelve and twelve. Aaron put 13 on the Niners. I mean, pretty easy to assume. I put 11. I mean, the line for this game was big. The Giants had a lot of injuries going into a short week, and the Niners are arguably the most talented team in the league. Um, Elijah Mitchell got onto the field for, I think, 11. He got more carries than Breda did. I don't know how he did. If he had a better game, that's even more. Funny. I think Elijah Mitchell got more carries than the whole Giants team did. <laughs> yeah, it checks out. Yeah, I think he ran. Uh, what he ran the ball eleven times, I think. Uh, also, we ought to take a moment to say, Mike Tomlin, the goat. <laughs> yeah, uh, I told y'all. I told ya! Mike Tom would be on the side of like, he got you, bitch! And what did he do? That was he got you, bitch! That was more of a Browns loss. That was, that was a Mike Tomlin W, as he's been that doing was, for the past 20 years, baby. That was a Browns he, loss. He, he, the Browns fumbled the ball. They literally fumbled Mook, the what ball. What does that result in? A Mike Tomlin W. Doesn't matter. <laughs> said it too but what was said i'm pretty sure exactly what was said was the browns will find a way to lose this game yep mike tomlin will cleveland, into a win. cleveland does not win against the steelers or against the steelers yes no he should have no i mean the browns should have won oh wow Lord you know what i could have <laughs> there you go he went 11 for 42 I mean, uh, he went 11 for 42, and the Giants' rush went 11 for 29. Breda technically had more points because of the touchdown. And he, and he caught three passes for two yards. But so. Thank you, Mike Tomlin, for doing your duty to this earth and being the Browns. He didn't even do anything. What do you mean he won? Guess what? The Browns still only have eight wins within the last 20 years against the Steelers. And the Browns, they should have won, but they... They should have, but they did it. That's the point. Mook, that was the whole point that me and Kuhn made last week was... Mike Tom will find a way. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, well... Cleveland, you know, this this seems like a game that they, that they should probably win after how Pittsburgh looked week one. But they won't because it's the Browns. And what happened? And yeah, on top of this, the Browns, that it's 
the Browns against the Steelers, who have historically been ass, starts yep. to click like clockwork. Well, and you gotta <laughs> think that, like, Deshaun Watson hasn't looked great. Um, oh, somebody sent me a still frame of the Chubb injury, and geez, I just hope that man's okay. Yeah. Because that... That looked like that could be have very scary implications. Uh, the only shitty thing about that too is uh, that's the same knee he blew out in college. Two blowouts on the same knee—that's very, very scary. But if anyone can come back, it'd be a freak like Chubb. Yeah. Yeah. And I do think the Browns <laughs> beat us if Chubb doesn't get injured. You know, sometimes if you're if you're a Browns fan, Agent, you're used to fate being very cruel to you. Uh, yeah. It's been happening for over over twenty years now. I just had to give uh, Mike Tomlin his due credit there because oh, we told him. Look, I see your ass. Look at the camera, like shut the fuck up. Bitch, you was wrong. <laughs> Coon, don't worry. The Steelers are in prime time again. This oh, time. I know. Oh, I know. Don't worry. I know. <laughs> but uh, let's get into the first game of the week: the Tennessee Titans the at Cleveland. Yo, I'll, I'll start it. Yeah, I put three on the Titans. Um. I, I just think that Vrabel's going to coach this team past the Browns for checks reasons, all the reasons we just mentioned in the last five minutes. Um, and the, the the Titans team showed life last week, you know. Like, Tannehill went out there. does scare me that Derrick Henry isn't practicing, but a Vrabel coach team is going to gonna be good against what I think is going to be a mistake-filled Browns team. This is just, I only have three points on it because, I mean, it could go either way, but I just think this is a game that the Browns shoot themselves in the foot and lose, so I got three on the Tennessee Titans. Um, you want to go, Asian? Or no, not really. All right, Mookie, you can go. Three on the Amari Coopers, and I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to say much more about the Browns. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go next. I got five on the Cleveland Browns, and it hurts. Uh, I just think that the Browns are going to come out, try to make a statement that their season isn't lost with Nick Chubb. I think Deshaun Watson needs to come out and have a big game. And the Deshaun Watson and Amari Cooper connection hopefully is real at home. Like it has been, the home row splits apparently are pretty bad with uh, Amari Cooper. So Didn't Five on the Cleveland Browns. Didn't Cooper, after it was saying he wasn't going to play Monday, didn't he play and actually have a good game? Seven receptions for 90 yards. That's my boy Cooper. I think Cleveland's going to come out one and make actually, a statement also. But the statement isn't going to be, we can win games. Statements are going to be, we can throw picks. Our quarterback history, <laughs> it lives up to his reputation. We don't get winners here. And when we do, we ship them off. We don't win games in Cleveland, Ohio. I put a six on the Titans. Um, yeah, I just don't like Cleveland at all. Especially when they're going to be forced to pass the ball. When they, that is their weakest form. They have not had a, they have not supplied a wide receiver good enough to make me ever think that they're going to do well. Braylon Edwards. Back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. Back in the 90s. <laughs> no, but anyway. Coon, you said they ship winners off. Just look at that guy down in Tampa that's 2-0. and it... I don't like Baker, but he was the only quarterback who led him to a winning season. I give him that. <laughs> like, he has, but how you gonna get? how are you going to try to say you're behind that guy? And then ship him off the next year. Makes no sense. I feel like the difference between Baker and Deshaun is Baker 
doesn't have as much talent as Deshaun, but has like a lot more confidence in himself and the team. Where Deshaun is just talented, but he just has no confidence right now in himself or the team. Or the coaching. Yeah, no, he shouldn't. He's in Cleveland. Well, since he's come back, he has not looked anywhere close to the player we've seen in Houston. Aaron put eight on the Browns. And, yeah. I will I will ride the the steady coaching of Rabel over that dumpster fire in Cleveland yeah. any day of the week. Um, next up, I'm surprised it says one side of a pick as is. Um, we got Atlanta versus the Detroit Lions at Detroit. Who would like to start? Aaron, I'll go. I'll go. I mean, I called last week trying to, like, kind of being a trap game. That it, felt, it didn't feel good picking the Lions after a big win against the, the Kansas City Chiefs. That being said, did the Lions get back on track this week? Uh, the Falcons just want to run the ball and, and run and run and run some more. And even though the Lions are a little bit beat up and coming off that disappointing loss, I'm still going to put seven on the Lions. Yeah, I got, I got six on the Lions myself. Um... I think I think we overestimated how when Seattle got blown out by the Rams week one, I think we overestimated. I don't think we, we realized that how like decent the Rams are, and we just thought, oh, well, Seattle's going back to be an ass. I think, you know, Seattle come out and did what they've done with Geno there, managed to put up a lot of points, managed to take it to Detroit, who... We might have overvalued coming off of a win against Kansas City. Um, but I still think Detroit's going to be a fairly great club. My questions are still out about Atlanta, but I, I give them credit for being 2-0. and I might have been a bit wrong about, about them just being a complete tire fire. They seem to know what they are, and they seem to lean into it, but I think Detroit's going to be one of those upper echelon teams in the NFC still, and I think Goff at home is going to have a – a big passing day, whether Amon Ra plays or not. So, I think you know, I think this might be a little bit more of a high scoring game than we would expect. But I got six on the lines. I I think they're gonna come out and look solid. Baby, it makes me happy to say I'm taking a two and zero Atlanta Falcons with five points. I mean, they've done exactly what I said. They have talent around that roster, and they're going to use it. And they've been using it, they've been winning, and I I can see it's toss up it's a toss up really. But I'm putting points on my Falcons because I've been behind them since the season start, man. Same here, speaking facts, brother. Uh I put two on the Falcons. Uh I just like the Falcons. And I think Detroit's a little beat up like you had said. Aaron put one on the Falcons also, by the way. <laughs> He's already jumping off his lines <laughs> after that week one against Kansas City. <laughs> I was going to say, that's just Lions fan overreacting to losing to what's going to be a pretty good ball club in Seattle. I mean, There's two things I want to say, too, before we move on from this game. Did y'all see B. John Robinson and that juke move that he had? Dude, week? he was nasty. It was so nasty. He is a nasty motherfucker. And secondly, I think this might be a fun game to watch between Jameer Gibbs and Bijan Robinson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Uh, yeah, like I said, I think this will be a fun game overall. Like I said, and even Atlanta even got back on track. Even got the passing game involved last week. I was very happy to see Ritter or uh, Drake London get that that twenty burger. I didn't play him, but it. It put put my mind at ease for drafting him. My boy, the Riddler. Riddler is actually looking pretty good too, at least from last week. Well, I I don't think Ritter's the type of guy you're gonna ask to drop back and throw the ball thirty times. So I think Atlanta's gonna win a lot of games if they can stay on script. I just don't think they're gonna be able to stay on script every game. Like this one, Detroit can put up a lot of points. That's why I like them because I don't know if. Atlanta's gonna be able to keep up. Oh man. But moving on, we got Caleb's boys, the Saints. Uh, 
at Green Bay in Lambeau. So, I put five on the Saints. Um, I'm starting. I I still hate Dennis Allen. <laughs> but I'm starting to get starting to get more confidence in this team. Um, Carr has yet to look great, but the defense. I feel like you know this is like a not as great version of the Cowboys. The story here is the defense. New Orleans has allowed less than 20 points in like 20 straight games. Um, Why well, I think this Green Bay club's good. It does. It looks like Aaron Jones is on track to play, so that's definitely a factor. But uh, <clears throat> I just think that the Saints defense has been very, very nasty. So the offense hadn't had to look amazingly well. I think that the Saints overall, though, I just think that this is going to be a game where Jordan loves an experience, you know, playing a great defense that hasn't been given up points. I just think that's tough to ask a guy starting for his first year to go out there and win a game if, you know. And I, I just think that this game is more going to be a learning experience for Jordan Love and the Saints will – are actually going to go 3-0, and and it might be a... This ball club may be a little... I had the Saints pegged to win six games all year, so... Don't worry, it's not too late. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. So this club might go a little bit further than I thought. It's it's crazy to think that there's three NFC South teams that are 2-0. and But, uh... Yeah, I got, I got five on the Saints. I, I feel fairly confident with... I feel fair, fairly confident going into Green Bay with the inexperience and the young and the young guys on that team. If the defense stays strong and don't drop an egg, because that'll eventually happen once you hit a streak like this. But until, you know, until then, I just got to say, hey, do I think the Saints can put up 20 on said defense? And, you know, I, I got five on them, so I don't love them. But I think there's a good chance New Orleans comes out of this with a win just from what we've seen on the defense side of the ball. I put four on the Saints as well. Um, yeah, no, the defense has been carrying them through games. I've liked what I've seen. I do have to say, Green Bay does have some more explosive players, in my opinion. I feel like their offense is very uh, boom or bust, I should say. Where? It's like. Watson's gonna be where again either the they're gonna throw a long bomb and just get a touchdown and run wild with that momentum, or they're just not going to get it going for a while. Um, that's kind of why I dropped their defense in fantasy. But it was like, well, shit, I want to be rooting for my boy on my roster while having the defense. <laughs> that just sounds problematic. But uh, I put four on the Saints. I think they're gonna be undefeated and. I think the Falcons are going to be undefeated, and we're going to see those teams clash as undefeated play teams before either of them take a loss, most likely. As of right now, I have six on the Packers, and it might switch to six on the Saints, depending on if Aaron Jones and Christian Watson can play. I'm expecting Aaron Jones to play, and I was hoping Christian Watson would play. And if those two can play, I, I have a little bit more confidence in the Packers and the Saints. I mean, I didn't think he could work, look worse than Kenny Pickett does, but Derek Carr might be up there with Pickett with his one touchdown on the year, the two interceptions. But it hasn't hasn't been fun. Um, something to look forward to for the Saints. Uh, DeAndre, our rookie running back, may get the start. Kendra Miller. Yeah. I was going to say Keandre Miller, but he, uh, that could be something fun to look at. A fucking uh, asshole. I don't think, even though he does get the start, I don't think they give Kendry Miller the full workload. I mean, no, we no, see no, Bijan I... Robinson and Jameer Gibbs, they're, they were both drafted higher, more talented probably, and they both still didn't even get the full, full workload their first week playing or second week, so. I think I think Tony Jones Jr. gets some work, and I think, I think Tony see, and Taysom. Yeah, I was gonna say I think we see about fifteen Taysom Hill runs if you're if you're looking for a tight. See, I, that spicy I was telling Asian 
That was my wild flex decision I was going to make if Kendry Miller was out. I think, I think you get 10 to 12 from Kendry Miller. I think you get a 5 from Tony, and then I think you get about 5 to 7 from Taysom Hill. I'll say this. They ran Taysom out there Monday night, and Carolina just couldn't stop him. Every time he came in, it was like 10 to 12 yards. Oh, it seems like the thing with Taysom Hill. But, Anytime he's out there, he just makes plays. Um, yeah, well, too bad they didn't do that week one when I jumped on the table. Yeah, same. Um, I do. I will say, it looks like uh, Aaron Jones is going to play. Looks like Christian Watson's still missing practices. So, take that for what it is. Um, I got seven on the Packers. I think the Saints are a low-scoring team. And I think that's gonna bite him in the ass. I think Jordan Love's gonna pop off. So you're you're saying that I'm the a... that the defense streak ends? Not. I think the defense will look nice, but I think it's more of their offense will cost them. So, like their offense won't be able to keep up with. He's saying what Derek Carr is ass. Is Green is Green Bay scoring over twenty points? Oh yeah, yeah. I think the streak's ending. My okay, bad. then that, that was all okay. I wanted to know. My bad. I thought you meant the. Either way, it would have been ended. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Aaron took the Packers yeah. with five. I'll, I'll say this. Uh, the one prediction I had for the Saints so far has been true, and that's that uh, Olave is going to pop off this season. He had a beautiful catch last week. Olave's been he's been playing well. I mean, he's been him and Michael Thomas have been getting 50-50 of the workload. And then Shahid comes in for some extra spice. Alright, well, moving on. We got Broncos Country. This ride. At Miami against the Finns. Put 16 on the Dolphins. All my confidence on the Dolphins. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Something feels off about Denver. I, I, thought, I thought they looked way better last week, but... I don't know. Does anybody else get this weird feeling that Russell Wilson, Sean Payton just isn't going to work? I mean, I just don't think Russell Wilson will work. I'll say this. I think last week was the best game he's played in a good while. But that being said, they still blew a lead. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just feels like Denver's on very shaky terms while Miami at home has looked good. I looked at this, and this was the game that I felt most confident in taking. So, all my points on Miami to go out there and just be explosive. I also put six down Miami. <laughs> Denver's ass. <laughs> There's not really much to say about it. I mean, Denver's looked like hot shit like last year. Um, The one thing that scares me is I do kind of see trap game written on this, but I'm ignoring all those signs and just all in on Miami. Tua don't believe in trap game. You know Tua's middle name is Donnie? Oh, yeah? That's why he's so good. That's why he's a god. Yeah, I mean, Donnie is a god. It's, it's is true. You want to hear something disgusting? What? Go ahead. <clears throat> Russell Wilson is the fifth best fantasy quarterback in football this year. He has more points than Tua, Anthony Richardson, Jalen Hurts, Josh Allen, Justin Fields, Lamar Jackson, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott. He went on draft in a lot of leagues. Is that thing? I was gonna say. Well, the thing is, I I don't know how much he put up week one, but I know I know last week he had like thirty three, thirty four. He put up fifteen week one, but yeah, it was all. Because of that Hail Mary, basically. But he's the fifth best quarterback in fantasy football right now. Uh, I don't know how much Sam Howell put up, but I imagine they both had pretty good weeks last week because that game was. For a Denver Commander game, <laughs> that game was kind of wild. Sam has 16 week one and 21 week two. He's the 12th uh, best QB right now. And I will say. Ahead of Josh Allen. Denver did get screwed. Well, Josh Allen played terrible week one. He made up for it last week, but week one he was 
think he only had like 10 points week one, 10, 11, something like that. Um, Denver did get screwed last week, though. They were like blanketed over Sutton. That no call was absolutely egregious. Yeah, it's kind of wild that we don't fans. enforce like, uh, like they have to review every last play of the game. That's kind of wild. It's not a thing. That's just the fact that he was like. He was like hanging on to that man. He was yeah, like, yeah, that's what, was, a that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like really fucking dumb that they don't just review the last play of every game I'm, just to be I'm safe like that. Well, they made they made pass interference reviewable. I don't know why that wasn't reviewed. Mm -hmm. It was just egregious. Like they hit that hell mary and then just got screwed. But yeah. Um, I put thirteen on Miami. I think Miami might be the uh, best team out of the AFC, in my opinion. They showed you many ways that they can win with the last two weeks. By many, I mean the two ways of running the ball and passing the ball. They look good in both. So, And Denver, as y'all said, looks like shit. <laughs> so, 13 on the Fins. Aaron put 10 on the Fins. With Aaron put 10. up on the fins so look if it is trap game um we'll, we'll all go down with the ship uh that's not a trap game too don't believe in the i mean i hope you're right uh, oh yeah, that's basically how i said it they can play football so they can win <laughs> <laughs> moving on we got the battle of the choke artists this week this should be a fun one for all the wrong reasons <laughs> We got the L.A. Chargers versus the Minnesota Vikings at Minnesota. I, who wants I got, to go first? I got one point on the Vikings. Um, look, it's just the fact that I, I at least think that Minnesota's coaching is better than anything that Brandon Staley's doing. You know, I used to have, like, little bits of faith in Brandon Staley, but... I mean, what can you say about that Charger team? Herbert's dropping like 30 a game. That man's a defensive head coach with a Bosa on his line. And he's given up the most yards in the league. And the most points. Like, you can't come in, be a defensive guy. Then your defense just, you know, choke. And you know Minnesota can score. Addison's looked great. Jefferson's looked great. I mean, Madison has not looked great. Handmakers, um, baby. Yeah, I mean, I just think that, you know, I I more just think that Staley's on the hot seat and Minnesota will, Minnesota will find a way to win this game because Brandon Staley will choke this game away. And I just think that we're, I think honestly what we're heading to is Kellen Moore as the head coach of the Chargers. Whether it be midseason this year because they keep losing or beginning of next year. But I got one point on Minnesota winning in Minnesota because, yeah, and, and because I asked Pluto and he said the Vikings win and he hasn't been wrong about the Vikings yet. He, he told me Baker's winning and he said, you know, we'll keep it close with Philly, but we're going to lose. And, you know, I just think the same here. I just think. I think that offense shines. I think it's going to... Actually, you know what? I'll just say it. This is my shooter game of the week. I took Mook's gimmick. Um, oh, I think it's everyone's shooter's game of the week. They're yeah. the projected highest total. Yeah, like I said, I think that this game's going to be all offense, no defense. And the Chargers will have the ball with a chance to win, and they'll choke. Because that is what they are great at. So one on the Vikings. You know, it's crazy. If you told me that my team scored 58 total points in two weeks with zero turnovers and and they're 0-2, I would, wouldn't know what to think. And that's, you know, the Chargers right now. I took the Vikings with three confidence points. I think it is also going to be a, shoot, a shootout out there. And I don't know. The Chargers are just 
it's crazy that what what they're doing with Justin Herbert's career, <laughs> not getting any kind of value out of him. And you brought in all these studs, and your defense is is that bad. <laughs> this was a hard one for me because I love my boy Herbert the pervert dearly. I had to really think, you know, who has the most to lose in this game? And I bounced back and forth for a while. And I came to the conclusion that. The Chargers should still be the favorites in this matchup, so they're going to lose this matchup. If the Vikings were supposed to be the favorites in this matchup, I would say they are going to lose this matchup. And the way I see it, the Chargers, by all purposes, should win this game because they have the more completed roster. But they're not going to, so I take the Vikings with two. The reason you see that face is because the line's actually the Chargers by one point. The Chargers are road favorites. That's that's actually shocking to me. Like, what have they done to deserve being called road favorites? They have Justin Herbert. That's what they've done. Plus, no Eckler. Well, as crazy as it sounds... Well, it's not really going to sound crazy, but I think the Chargers play up and or down to their opponent no matter who they're playing i think all their games are close for no for no reason or maybe the reason is their he uh, head coach but um i could see this going either way honestly my confidence should be lower but i got five on the chargers i like i said i think they either play up or play down to their opponent and uh I don't really have much to talk about Minnesota. It's more just the Chargers kind of doing that. I got I kind of brain farted on what I was gonna say, but I, I was like thinking about it, thinking about it, and then. Well, this is a brain fart type moment. of game. Yeah, now it's my moment. Just gone. Um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a reason. I think Justin Herbert will stay around the uh, with Coach Staley. I think he'll stay at the fifty percent win mark. And right now he's two games under that, so uh, Justin Cutler's got to keep Justin Cutler. Dude, Cutler actually played like ass. How are you going to give Herbert that title? Herbert hasn't thrown an interception. What is this, man? Herbert doesn't deserve I this. Too. I will say I think the Chargers are playing for their season tomorrow or Sunday because you can't start off 0-3 and, and expect to make the playoffs. Especially in their division. Well, I don't know. They're, they're in a division with the Raiders and the Broncos. I really don't and the, and the Chiefs. And the Chiefs. I really don't That's what I'm saying. Right. The Chiefs are going to win the division, so they're, they have to hope to get a wild card spot. Yep. And starting off 0-3 is not going to bode well for them if they do. But yeah, that, that's so I do I think the Chargers are playing for their season Sunday. That's why I went for the Chargers because I think the fifty percent win mark as well. Aaron put three on the Vikings. Justin Cutler. Disgusting man does not deserve well, I that. I that from, I think I heard that from you last year, Asian. You did. That man has played nothing but good football, and he's getting the fucking disrespected by you guys. I can't believe it. Wasn't Justin, just, uh, wasn't uh, Jay Cutler like the best? No. Uh, Browns. No. Lady, or Browns. Bears no. Lady. I mean, he, for threw for, he threw for a lot of yards and losses normally. Yeah, but he also fucking was ass. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you could say that about every Browns quarterback. They can't nail offense for anything. Oh, man. Anyway. Have we all set our piece on that game? Mm -hmm. Moving on, we got the New England Patriots at New York against the Jets. So, you know, earlier this week, I was like, yo, I got a, got like a decently different survivor pick just to figure out that Mook picked the same survivor pick as me. I, I got 10 on the Patriots, so I mean... They kind of own New York. They kind of own the Jets. And 
I don't think Zach Wilson's going to have a good game against the Bill Belichick defense. He's shown it time and time again. I think this game's going to be a very ugly, low-scoring defensive shootout. Like, this is the game no one wants to watch. Fuck no. I, I do think New England gets the win here. I mean, they do look more competent with an actual o cor- offensive coordinator there. And their defense is pretty good. And I just I just think it's going to be a very, very, very... You know, this is this is the game that's complete opposite of Chargers Vikings. <laughs> this game could end six three, and I wouldn't be shocked. But I got ten for New England getting their first dub of the season. I also have seven on New England. <laughs> um, yeah, the Jets have not shown me anything to be even remotely think they have an offensive pulse. Um, oh, they're that pulse is called Garrett Wilson, the whole pulse. And we've seen Zach Wilson enough to know that he's not that guy. And well, Bill Belichick, he's out coached that man before. He's gonna do it again. So. <laughs> I mean, y'all pretty much said everything I wanted to say. Bill Belichick against Zach Wilson, and uh, I w- I put four on the Patriots. I kind of don't feel good about it because I, I feel like the Patriots could still lose somehow. But, like I said, I just went four on the Patriots. I agree with Mook. I have four on the Patriots, but this has trap game written all over for me. I think that this is one of the games where the Jets defense can win this game alone for them. Lord, let's hope not. I believe that Mac isn't going to look that I believe in Ramondre Stevenson. Yeah, I mean, Ramondre playing nice would be great because I'm more than likely going to have to play Ramondre this week. He's been pretty good. He's got a solid 15, so I'll take it. I'm still, my, my, like I said, my only fear is they end up on, like, the two on the goal line, and I see Zeke's fat ass jogging out to the field <laughs> to steal Ramondre's touchdown. Uh. Like, I see that man come in, and I'm like, no, no. Guys, y'all don't want to do this. Call a timeout. Get Ramondre his breather. Get him in there so I'll get the points. Guys, we don't need to bring in Ezekiel Lacey. Come on. Um. So Aaron, when he sent me the picture, and the score for this, his points that he put on this game is cut off, so I don't know what he put on this game. That old man. He picked, he picked the Patriots, okay. though. Goddamn old men, bro. Don't, don't understand technology. Uh, uh, but yeah, Cheeseburger Elliot, man. Passing his torch. Can we, uh... Can we just move on? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? You don't want to talk about but, Cheeseburger Elliot? <laughs> I just don't want to talk about New England at New York. And moving on... We got Buffalo at Washington going against the Commanders. I got 11 on the Bills. I'll keep it short and sweet. I don't think Washington is going to keep up with them. I I have 9 on Buffalo. Man, I hate that I have 9 on Buffalo. Because y'all know that I have not I have not felt amazing about the Bills. I still think there's a lot of bad vibes going there, but I mean, beating beating a Raiders team does not calm those vibes. Uh, I think Washington's a lot friskier team than people, because they're you know they're also two and zero. You know they got a good defensive front there. Um, I think that this is a. I got nine on Buffalo. I think this is a good step up and prove it. I think right the key to Buffalo winning games is Allen playing smart, clean football. Um. I think this defense will be a very good test on that and a very good test on getting, you know, the season kind of back on track and kind of calming the doubters. So I got nine on Buffalo, but this commander's team is, I think, better than a lot of people think. And it worries me a bit, but I'll I'll ride nine on Roller Coaster Allen. To me... I think the Commanders are a we'll we'll find out a way to get it done kind of team. 
doesn't matter how we get there. We'll we'll find out how to get it done. But that being said, I'm going to go with Buffalo this week. I don't think that they'll find a way to get it done. But if they do, it wouldn't surprise me. I did put 10 on Buffalo. I, I know I kind of just hyped them up to just put them down. <laughs> but, I'm like, but I'm picking the other way. <laughs> with high confidence. Yeah. Fuck the Manders, bro. That's what I think they are. So if they do pull it out, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. Not even like but... I don't feel good about this or anything. Just built them up like, man, look at look at the command. Built them up to kick them down, man. That's crazy. Okay, like they played Arizona in a very close game, but they got it done. They should have they been a close game against Arizona. Arizona. They came back 18 on to the Broncos. Yeah, on the Broncos. Which is also not a good team. All, all I'm saying about this Buffalo squad, Mook, the reason this game scares me is because that defense is good. This could be a game that Josh Allen throws away, which is why I don't feel great in my nine confidence. I but just you you built this team up just to just to crap all over them. After. No, I just I just don't think they get over the Buffalo Hill. That's all. <laughs> But if they do, it wouldn't surprise me. That's the whole reason I said that. It's because I could see them losing, but I don't think that they will. <laughs> I think the Bills are a better team, so I'm going with the Bills by 10. Aaron put 7 on the Bills, by the way. And I'm going to put 8 on the Bills. <laughs> yeah, I think you want to say about Washington so you can kick them down first? No, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I won't move this up. I got 8 on the Bills. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, moving on. I imagine that's all you cared to say about that game. Yeah. We got the Texans at Jacksonville against the Jaguars. I mean, guys, I got 12 on Jacksonville. Oh, give me, give me 15 on the Prince. I think people are kind of down on Jacksonville because they, they did put that egg against Kansas City. Thing is, I think Kansas City's defense is pretty good. Mm. The first two weeks have, have shown me otherwise, Asian. <laughs> you know, holding that Detroit team to 17, and then, you know, last week, holding that Jacksonville squad to nine. It looks like Zay Jones is going to be missing, so it looks like it's going to be Christian Kirk up again at the two. Probably having a good game, but I think this is going to be a Jacksonville parade. Like, I think the offense gets back on track, and we see this game could be more high scoring than I think maybe we realize. But I, I think I think Jacksonville's going over thirty this week. So fifteen on Trevor and the Jack. I will say Aaron put nine on Jacksonville. I got nine on the uh, Jack. I got nine on the Jack. So <laughs> um, I just don't really know what to really think about the Texans and they do. The Jags did put a good uh a goose egg up last week. They just couldn't get in the end zone. I think that'll be different this week. And maybe the game will be close. I don't really know how to feel about this game, but I put nine on the Jags. They're talking about uh, the Texans QB might miss time this week, too. Or he's hurt. CJ Stroud. Yeah, Stroud, so. Oh, he's hurt. The whole offensive line is hurt. I probably should have went higher on this game, but I also only went to nine. Damian Pierce does not look like the same Damian Pierce as last year. And it's mostly, I think it's because of the offensive line just not having any quality starters that aren't injured. Yeah. It's sad. As a fan of Pierce Pierce, man. I do think in a league, right? Because I don't like Scary Terry at uh at Buffalo necessarily. I think I might be playing Tank Dell in my cash league. Could be. I would only be playing Tank Dell if CJ Stroud is playing. I would not be playing well, yeah, him. Yeah, no. If you tell me that the other the other boys coming in, Davis Mills. I, Yeah, if Mills comes in, I don't feel confident. But I mean, I, 
I haven't heard the injury news on Stroud. He was injured last week with his throwing shoulder, and it's just I don't think it's gotten much better. So yeah, he's been questionable he's ever since. Either, so. I think he might play, but I think he's going to be playing through injury if he does. So I brought it up last week. It was his throwing shoulder, and his offensive line was injured and things like that. Yeah, I'm looking to see if he's like partial practice or anything. <laughs> Because, I mean, my assumption is if he's practicing, he's playing. But, uh... Does not have an is- injury des- designation ahead of Sunday's game. Oh, then Practicing full Friday will continue to play through his minor shoulder injury. He's playing if he's practicing. That's my assumption. But, uh, yeah, moving on from that shit show. That is the Texans. We got another shit show. This one's called the Colts. Uh, the Colts are going to Baltimore against the Ravens without Anthony Richardson, their Lord and Savior. Um, I put ten on Baltimore. Maybe, maybe. I got seven on Baltimore, but I desperately want Minshew Mania. I would love to see Minshew Mania pop off, but I, I mean, don't. Hey, this Colts team with Richardson's look, the ceilings look nice. This Colts team has some potential. Richardson and needs to learn to slide, man. He does, but you know, I I like Gardner Minshew. I would, I hope they have a big game. I've got seven on Baltimore. I don't know what this Baltimore team is yet, but that that's all I really got. I don't really have a lot of analysis on this. Yeah, team. I haven't haven't watched too much on these on these two teams. Did you guys see that the Baltimore Ravens added a new running back? Who? Kenyon the God Drake. Oh yeah, I did see that they were working him in, and he does have good, uh, good reputation there. So didn't he play there before? Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see him get involved. Uh, I think if the Colts do beat them, it will be through Gardner Menchu and Michael Pittman. Uh, the Ravens are a really hard team to run against, and they're a little bit easier to pass against, but I have two protect on the Ravens. Hey, don't, don't say that as, as a Moss owner. I'm, I'm praying. Uh, as a Moss owner, I would be looking elsewhere <laughs> if, I, if you have options. Aaron has 12 on the Ravens. Options are not there. Not even Keandre Miller or Kendra Miller, because I would probably start Kendra Miller over Zach Moss. Um, I put... didn't you didn't you pick up Kendra Miller? Oh, okay. Yeah, I you thought you were talking about Kendra Miller. Yes, I did. No, <laughs> no, the I got I got backs in that league. They're called Ramondre Stevenson and Seattle Boyo. Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Kenny Walker. Um, I've yeah, been... looking on our free agency, there's not much that you can pick up <laughs> over Zach Moss. I mean, I could, I could always just flex a receiver though. I could always just mm. like, scary carry and flex Tank Dell or mm. something. That might be the option. I put eight on the Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson's gonna have a. Uh, a I don't know if I want to say a big game because I'm. My confidence doesn't really check out, but I think he will have a pretty big game. I'm hoping for like six or seven Mark Andrews touchdowns. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not really we'll the biggest fan of uh, Minshew at quarterback. Okay, I like Minshew, but I like uh, the rookie better. Well, yeah. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at. I got the Ravens with eight. So if you believe in Pluto's prediction of the future, go pick up Minshew this week. Minshew I, I will four s- touchdowns and 278 yards. I will say, looking at your roster, I would start Miles Sanders over Zach Moss this week. I, yeah, I do have the sand. You know, well, well, we're fitting to talk about that game. I, I may, oh, I hate how much I have on that game when we get to it. I don't. But, um, to put something on this game, I will say. Lamar Jackson looked fantastic last week. So that's good for me. That should make you feel, huh? That's good for me. 
Yeah. Yay. Yeah, he looked. I don't know if he looked fantastic on a fantasy radar, but I mean, just overall, he looked really <laughs> good. A lot better than week one. Uh, 25 points. I mean, um, I, that's pretty decent. I did see, I don't know what the injury is, but Odell is missing the game, right? Uh, it's an ankle injury. I don't know if he's missing the game or not. They haven't confirmed I I if he's out or in. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, he's out. He's been rolled out. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I thought I seen an O on his name earlier. O for O, though. Yeah, he's been ruled out. So I guess, you know, if you have good old Zay, fire him up this week. <laughs> and Nelson Aguilar, too, had caught a touchdown in Odell's absence. Don't bank on Aguilar. You'll hate yourself. <laughs> That that's what we call a dart throw. Um, but yeah, moving on. Oh God, we got yeah. the Carolina Panthers with Andy Dalton at the helm versus Seattle. I I have some things to. I put nine on Seattle. You're telling me Andy Dalton is starting football again? Hell no, I'm not picking him. Here's the thing, I think. I think I like them better with Andy Dalton than I do with the with Young at this point. <laughs> I I think the floor is a little higher with Dalton, but the ceiling is higher with uh, Bryce Young. Yeah, I, no, I I agree with that. It's just Bryce Young has uh, been missing targets. He's definitely having a little bit of trouble, you know. It's that short man problem. Yeah, I have thirteen on Seattle. As I think I said, I think Seattle's going to be a pretty damn b- good ball club. Um, I think I overreacted week one when they lost, but I still think Seattle is going to be good. I think they're going to be fighting for the West. I had this team up there being one of the better teams in the NFC. Um, Dalton and Carolina is interesting. I, I think, you know, I think they're going to be more enticed to hand the ball off to Sanders, which... Seattle, you know, hasn't isn't known for being a great defense, but a lot of their guys are young. Last week, their defense I, popped the fuck off, though. Oh yeah, I mean they're capable of it. They have studs on that defense. I, like I said, I think that the Seattle team is is just the same team. It's just very much that uh, what's it called? It's just very much another year of experience under them all. I think the Seattle team is the story of can Gino continue to be consistent. Um, but yeah, Andy Dalton starting. I feel like you know there's a little bit, a little bit more ceiling on this Carolina team for now. I don't think they'll win this game, but I think that you know Dalton, who's kind of become a career journeyman, will surprise the team if he ends up starting for more than one week. They're saying this young week could be a multiple, a multiple week ordeal. Which, I actually think Asian owns him. Thielen had a decent game last week. And I think he's going to get even more targets with Andy Dalton being in the game. Thielen did have a decent game. Oh, yeah, I thought he had like 14, 15. I think 20. His numbers... Oh, he had 20? Mm-hmm. Jeez, because I think that's going to end up being Dalton's kind of kind of go-to short routage guy. So, But I got 13 on Seattle. I just... New quarterback coming in. I don't exactly feel amazing about it because it's always a a question mark on how it's going to look. But I've got 13 on Seattle taking care of business being that that team that, you know, I think was going to go far at the beginning of the year. Um, Why, why isn't Bryce Young playing? Is it because he sucks or is he's he hurt? Injured? Okay. <laughs> Wait, you don't dra- you don't draft the number one pick, start him for two games, and say doink. Well, we're done with you. I mean, unless you're Arizona. Good. That's why I asked. I just wanted to know. Aaron put eleven on Seattle, by the way. Oh, well, great minds think alike, because I also put eleven on Seattle. I I the Panthers, not good, brother. Um. Seattle. Was that a Jamaican accent? You know what? There's a story to go with that. Um, Rip Josh Rosen. No, that's just the way I heard it. Didn't Rosen get the full season? Um, Rosen? Chosen Seattle, Rosen? I think I was... 
Yeah. Yep. He got to get killed for a whole year. I know he got more than two games. Go ahead, Moop. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. And then with Seattle, I feel like they got uh, underestimated by me maybe a lot more. I know that he he said that he underestimated them after week one. And, uh, yeah, I just think the Seahawks are a way better team, so I put 11 on them. Uh, I got the same as Moop. He went 11 on Sea Chickens. As Diablo would say, Seahawks flying to victory. <laughs> Doesn't he say, does he say fly, Seahawks fly? Yeah. Uh, oh, man, that's gross. Um, speaking of growth, moving on to the next game, we got the Chicago Bears versus the Kansas State Chiefs. I put 16 on the Chiefs. The Bears were disappointing. I love Fields, but the Bears are disappointing. Wait. Didn't you say you put 16 on the Dolphins? No, I put 13 on the Dolphins. Oh, okay. I don't know why I heard 16. You got anything else you want to say about this? No, the Chiefs are going to shit on them. Travis Kelsey's going to catch like 15 touchdowns. Break a record or two. <laughs> I got I got 14 on KC. Um, did y'all see the media for Chicago for the week? Hell no! I know that Justin Fields kind of threw the coaches on yeah. the bus saying that he's being overcoached. Yeah, he threw the coaching under the bus and then came out the next day and was like, oh, my mistakes are on me. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I think they're going to let Fields have a lot more free range this week because he came out and said that. It's not going to lead to a win, but as a fields owner i'm hoping it's leading to some of that special i think he's going to get to run a lot more this week and like i said don't think they win but we'll see what ends up happening it was just something to it was just something to kind of to kind of look at though that he's throwing the coaching staff underneath the bus cuz like I said, if Chicago does bad this year, I'm not shocked if they move off Phil. I mean, don't they still have Matt Nagy there? I think he went to no. the Chiefs. Oh, who the hell is yeah, their coach? Actually, Matt Nagy's in Kansas City. Oh. Their coach is Eberflus, I think is the dude's name. I don't know who that is, Sam. <laughs> um, but yeah, I could. And this regiment didn't bring Fields in. Coons said I was crazy when I said this, but. But the stacked as this quarterback class is, I'm not shocked if the Bears move off Justin Fields if they have a top pick. Just, it's just something I could see. I mean, you know, this staff didn't bring him in. They went out and drafted a bunch of offensive weapons, and Fields is like five and twenty-two in his career, something like that. Five and seventeen, something like that. And I just think they're bringing in these. All these players, you know, you went out and got him Claypool, you got him DJ Moore, went out and you went out and got him uh, Montgomery. No, 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 they lost Montgomery. Foreman. They've got yeah, Foreman. Even though he's a now a healthy Chase draft. Claypool. Yeah, I'm just saying they went out and made moves and like they're not great, but they're I feel like they're going out at least making an effort, and I feel like if it don't lead to wins. They're going to change the quarterback. The problem with that is all the moves are not offensive linemen. <laughs> and the, and they, got no, well, they got no quarterback to go to this year. I don't I don't think Chicago has that bad of an O-line. It's pretty bad. I think it's probably in the bottom five. But, like I said, I feel like they, well, didn't they draft an O-lineman with their first bet, with their first round draft pick? I don't know. All I know is one of the linemen isn't going to buff that O-line to being anything. Well, I'm saying they're out there making moves, and the moves aren't even leading to promise. Like, the Bears have just looked awful. So, I got, like I guess I got 14 on KC, but I'm not shocked if this season goes, goes just completely down the drain if they just scrap a lot and start over. Um... I think the Bears are Omega Dookie, and uh, I'm not trying to – okay, I'm kind of going to put the Chiefs down. I think they'll be fine. I think they'll win their division, but I don't think that they'll have a top seed. I don't think they're going to be as good as they once were, in my opinion. I think that they'll come in at the four seed. 
That's crazy because the AFC Championship game for like the last five years has practically been the Arrowhead Invitational. I feel you. They're back to back Super Bowl champions. So don't don't be surprised if or I start fading fast. the Chiefs. Um, but I'm definitely not fading them this week. I got 15 on uh, the Chiefs this week. I think uh, 16 touchdowns for Travis Kelsey or something like that, record breaking. Yeah. Yeah. I'll say this: I don't think the Chiefs fall <laughs> below the two seed. Yeah, I don't know three AFC teams that uh, is above to, uh, to go on Coon's point. Pro Football Focus releases offensive line grade, and the Bears rank at number 30 overall as a unit. Damn. I know my O-lines, so, baby. <laughs> so who ranks the 32nd, the Cardinals? It's either the Cardinals or Vikings. Uh. Oh, Asian died. Oh, Asian. oh Asian's alive. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard me, but Pro Football Focus has the Bears ranked 30th as a unit. Yeah. Yes, I, I asked who was the worst, the Cardinals? <laughs> or the Vikings. Uh, let me see if I can find that. Also, uh, Aaron put 16 on this game. Uh, he picked the Chiefs, obviously. I cannot find that. Uh, I have uh, I put high points on this. I forget. Uh, I put 13 points on the Chiefs. And not much to said about Justin Fields and the Bears. Love Fields, but not this year. <laughs> it's not his year right uh, now. I don't know how I feel about Fields. Yeah, oh, Karen, can can I can I hype up the the next game for you for you take over? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, do you, do you want first dibs or? I'll let y'all cook. Die? Is I'm cooking up something over here too. Well, well, okay, okay. So, as y'all know, Mook's a Cowboys fan, Coon's a Cardinals fan, and this week we have Dallas going to Arizona. Coon, before we make our predictions, can you can you tell us what you've dubbed this week in the group chat? Hmm. Can you tell us what you've dubbed this week in the group chat? Um, I have to remember what I said. You you declared it. Let me see here. You can let Mook go real quick while I figure out what I said word for word because I say a lot of tell shit. Us, tell us what's gonna happen. Um. Well, it's not gonna look good for the Cardinals. Oh, I ever why I said that. Keep going, Mook. I have sixteen on Dallas. I think. The defense is amazing and spectacular. The offense, I think, is good. I wish we were great on offense. I think the offense is a little slow, but not bad. Um, Arizona's been able to put points up, but I don't know if they'll put points up this week, to be honest. I, I think Dallas' defense is just that good. And I think since Arizona's tanking, it seems like anyways, it it's just not going to be good for Arizona. And I'll just keep it right there. Um. Uh, as sad as it is, I also put 16 on the Cowboys. Oh, also, this is my lowest and uh, highest scoring game, just to let y'all know. Mm. I am bullying the, uh, the Cardinals. I forgot to put that as uh, before Thursday, so the deadline has passed for me, but... This would probably also be my highest and lowest scoring. Uh, competition would be the Vikings scoring the highest points this week. So, uh, I sent Kale a message earlier in the week. And I said, yo, Caleb, I got a spoiler for you. I sent a screenshot, right? And Caleb, can you tell me what that screenshot says real quick? I think you dubbed this week like Mook Takes L's Week. Or yes, something. this is Mook yeah. Takes L's Week. This is going to take three L's. Because I put one point on the Arizona Cardinals. I said that one point represents the one point they're going to win by when Matt Prater, the god, kicks the game-winning field goal. See, Mook's in the room. 
I got a spoiler for you. <laughs> he clicked the Cardinals. That one, that one represents the one point that they're gonna win by. This is my Shula game of the week. I have Arizona put up the most points in a clusterfuck of a game between the Cowboys. They seem to let us score points a lot more often than you'd think, I feel like. And I think they're going to do that this week. And I I don't know, I feel like this is a cowboy thing to do, to lose this game against Arizona. I mean, they put up 16 points against a decent commander's defense and 28 points against a shitty Giants defense, so. Yep. I feel like this is the Cowboys thing to do to lose this week against us. It is going to come at the swift, merciful boot of Matt Prather, the greatest line of all time. A 64-yard field goal to win the game. And the crowd's going to go wild in Arizona. They're going to be like, we win games here? What? We win games here? Hell yeah, we win games here. Not many, but we win some of them, god damn it. Uh, and Mook will have taken an L in his real life team, on uh, his fantasy team in Yahoo, and on uh, his fantasy team in Dynasty. This is Mook Takes L's week right here. I'm giving him the triple crown. I'm giving him the triple crown right now. <laughs> said that this is the Pluto <laughs> level of predictions. Realistically, I uh, think we'll trade in fantasy one and one, but I don't think I'm taking more than two L's this week. Um, I got one of the down. two being the Cowboys losing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say here's the thing. That'd be the biggest. Thing. That'd be the we biggest W. <laughs> we know for a fact that Dallas is gonna have an F game somewhere. Just, oh, if it happened in Arizona. <laughs> it's gonna happen in Arizona. Because we got some killers out here, dog. We got some people who took the bus to work. <laughs> you would literally turn the phone off for the night? No. Nah. I'm sending Matt <laughs> Prater. I'm sending <laughs> chat notifications off. I'd be like, I, I, can't. <laughs> I can't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Mook, Mook, I want you to realize. If Arizona wins this game... Next week on, on podcast, Toon's going to turn on his webcam and do a full rendition of Rocket Man. <laughs> Not only that pick Arizona, I have him scoring the most points this week. Like I said, he's on one today, buddy. You you realize that, like, if they win, <laughs> Toon's going to be singing Rocket Man all week next podcast. I will be. That's our one win, baby. Well, yeah, damn right. That's all we need. Jesus. That's the only win I need in my life. I have 12 on Dallas. I will say that uh, there is a there is a sign. We were talking about my fantasy roster. There is a sign with Diggs out that says maybe I should start Hollywood Brown. Yeah, he's going to put up like 30 I, points this I'm week. I'm highly considering it. I mean, well, that and like what? That makes, that makes Gilmore the one in Dallas. Old man Gilmore, right? Yeah, man can still ball. I just think that did <laughs> losing Diggs is big. I think it's big, anyways. Cowboys are overrated. I don't think they're that overrated, Pluto. They've been right, dominant right, right. the first two. Aaron, weeks. Aaron put sixteen uh, I, I on the Cowboys. Diggs. By the way, big mistake. Big mistake. With Diggs gone, that D's gonna look worse. I mean, the D's looked amazing. You know. I don't, I, I, I think that D's really, been getting carried by Micah Parsons. Anyway. Yeah, I, I, was just, I don't think hey, Diggs is the end all be all of their defense. defense. Sorry. I'll say this, like, and I hate to give the Cowboys fans. <laughs> I think it's a little too soon, but I can see why they would think that this team has Super Bowl aspirations. If I mean, they always do, so I can see why they really well, think no, it now. No, the, 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 yeah, the, the other years, those were, those were fake aspirations. Not to them. To make them feel good. Not if you ask them, man. If this is the classic Dallas F game, this is going to laugh so hard. Dude, this has the I classic Dallas remember. F game right all over it. I don't know if y'all remember. It was a few years back. I don't know if it was the Zach Wilson Jets yet. But Dallas was looking like undefeated, looking really good. And they went and just laid an egg to the Jets. 
They've done this to they've done that to the Cardinals also yet I mean, before. Just, well, and you might say they're above the F games. Just look at the last game last season. A must win at Washington to possibly take the two seed <laughs> and they dropped an egg. So I mean we've seen the classic Dallas F game. We'll hear about it from the next But I, I think I think Dallas has looked dominant. I I don't have Kahunes the size of Coon. You see this over here, Mook? Dallas ninety eight percent, Arizona two percent. Coon's in that two percent. Yeah, I know. I I was on the train last week, and they should. Yeah, no, I, I told you you should have been in that train. <laughs> but I got twelve on the Cowboys as well. But right. for just for the the memes and the laughs, I would love to see Arizona win this game. It was looking good last week. Yeah, it would be so, so funny good. that we lose to the god awful Giants and beat the Cowboys. You know it. Some could say that it's that it's faith that this game falls the week that you and Mook play fantasy twice. It is. It is. He's about to take three L's. We, I'm not. Mook, I'm, I'm if you take three L's, I don't know if you can show your face again. I'm guaranteed taking two W's. <laughs> if Mook loses, don't be shocked if he's not on podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to be talking so much shit. <laughs> Why Coon has ordered a space helmet and he's and he's in he's on here in a tux with his bow tie out. <laughs> eating like chicken wings. Ah, you know who's not eating victory wings? Mook. <laughs> I think Coon could lose both fantasy games as long as the Cowboys lose. Uh, yeah, no, I would I would take that. That's a W in my book. That'd probably be the worst. That's the be- that's like the second best outcome. Well, third best, but yeah. You know, um, hey, and low key, I mean, I didn't have the the goal to play it. Lot, I I would never play him, but uh, if you played Josh Dobbs in fantasy, he had a game. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think I've ever put Josh Dobbs in twenty seven points together. Well, now you have baby Rocket Man. Yeah, and then they didn't do anything after that. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. They're saving all their stamina for this week. The Giants could have been 0 3, damn it. And now the Cowboys are going to have an L. They put up all them points and they were like, they were like, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're supposed to be tanking for Caleb. Let the Giants score. You know what you're going to be hearing when the if the Cowboys lose? Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. The, yeah. Listen, the memes will be immaculate if Dallas loses. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be so happy. I think I go that that will be my Phil. Super Bowl, man. I'd be filled Look, with so much they, rage if they lose. I'd be like, Luke, whatever you do, don't wear a cowboy shirt into work. <laughs> the cow- oh, trust me, I don't go into work until ten. If so the I Cowboys know. lose, sure that's the season. Off. That's the win. That's my you season right play. there. You're going to have to put your Parsons jersey in the closet. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to be like, uh, all right, Dak, you're coming off. Well, is it going to be Dak or is it going to be Parsons? <laughs> Might be Parsons. I, I want to get it clean before I wear it. Parsons is going to get oh. stiff on my dogs, bro. Uh, Can we just move on to the next <laughs> game? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, we've given Arizona too much time in the limelight. <laughs> but this is the one time they're going to get that much time. So, you know. Except next week when they win. Yeah, again, then they become two and two and two. Um, we are moving on to the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Las Vegas Ra- Raiders. Asian, would you like to start us off? Tell us about oh, yeah. the the Pittsburgh Steelers, Asian. Ian, did you guys see the Steelers fans chant Fire Canada in our own stadium? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, I don't get why Mike Tomlin is so loyal to the guy when the whole world can see that he's a bad offensive corner. He's so predictable. He's so one-dimensional. And it's just it's painful to watch. And at this point, there are people and reporters talking about why the Steelers shouldn't give Mitchell Trubisky a shot. Our Receivers are getting frustrated, and you can see it. Pickens is frustrated with the play. 
Calvin Austin came out and said that he's frustrated with the play and play calling. And I stand by my statement about Najee Harris being one of the worst running backs right now in the NFL. All that being said, go ahead. So, I was just saying that Najee's like bulked up, but he's gotten slower in the process. And he's one of the strongest running backs in the NFL. But he's the one of the least explosive running backs in the NFL. I think, I think Jalen Warren is very explosive, but Najee, it's like, yeah, it takes three guys to bring him down, but there's three guys on him within three yards of the play. And that might be because of our offensive line. Our offensive line hasn't graded out very well either. Uh, that being said, Garoppolo hasn't looked the best either, but they still got Devontae Adams, one of the best receivers in the league, and I don't know if we have a cornerback that can stop Devontae Adams. All that being said, I still put one on the Steelers because I'm a Steelers fan. But also, I wanted to say that uh, as good as our defense has been and looks and carried us to the Browns win, it's been getting torched on the run and the uh, run game. And I think this could be a get get right game for Josh Jacobs. Uh, is the backup, is the uh, receiver for Vegas coming back? Uh, Jacoby Myers is still questionable on the concussion protocol. Cause that that seemed to be the guy that seemed to be the guy that uh, that Garoppolo gelled with the most. No. Oh no, Myers is fully cleared. Okay. I'm sending those Mike Tomlin gifts out again. The God himself, the unbreakable. Streak of being even or positive is not ending, and he is going to will his team to another win against the Raiders. It's going to look over, and it's going to be like nine seconds left on the clock. All they have to do is kneel the ball, and the snap is going to get fumbled. They're going to pick up and return it to the house for a touchdown because he willed his team to a win again. I put three on the Steelers. Look, there's a reason that Tomlin has never had a quote-unquote losing season. And it's because he beat trash can teams like the Raiders. True. Preach! But, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to tell me you're giving me Pittsburgh? I mean, I'm sure they're probably the dog for... Yeah, you're giving me Pittsburgh as a dog? Like, I'm just going to keep riding it until you give me a reason not to ride it. Like... I don't trust Josh McDaniels. I mean, I think Jimmy G's looked fine in Vegas, but I think that, you know, Pittsburgh, as usual, will pick off Jimmy G, get some, get a fumble or something, and I think they're going to win this game. It's not going to be a pretty win, but I think they're going to win because Tomlin just wins games like this when you're putting them up against, you know, badly coached teams. It's just kind of what he does. So I'm going to be right there with Coon, posting the Tom, but posting the Mike Tomlin gifts when they inevitably win. Aaron put two on the Raiders. Uh, so I just switched my confidence around. Um, I put six on the Patriots and Jets. Originally it was four. I moved my uh, four around to the, to the last Monday night game. And I put one on the Steelers, which I think I'm going to go with the Raiders. I think the Steelers are god-awful. <laughs> God awful. I think the Raiders aren't much better, but Look. oh man, I, this game's okay. the Steelers are winners. This game. Wait, can can I ask you if you think if you think these teams are both ass, right? Yes. yes. Why would you not put your point on the better coach in that situation? Because I know you're not telling me McDaniel's is a better coach than Tomlin. There's a first time for everything. This might be the first year that. Mike Tomlin's not keeping that five percentage. <laughs> well, we're, we're two we're two weeks in, and what what's the Steelers' record? Fifty. I mean that that was more that was more of a more of a Browns loss than the Steelers. It's win. still a Steelers win. That's that's irrelevant. No, 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 that's yeah, irrelevant that's, information. I mean, they play Vegas. That means at some point at this year they probably play the Chargers as well, and you can count that as a win. That'll be another game where Tomlin just wins because he's the better coach. I'm just saying, 
And that means he plays Denver also. Pittsburgh. He can win that game too. Pittsburgh's offense has not looked good. Well, you know what they say, Mookie. Defense wins championships. And and originally, you mean T.J. Watt wins championships? Defense wins championships, man. I mean, Alex Highsmith made a pretty big play too. Or a couple of big plays in that game. I think we have one of the better edge rusher duos in the league. Well, I I just. I can't take the Steelers. Uh, originally, I had them picked, but now, now all y'all are going with the Steelers. I'll, I'll, I'll ride the Raiders train alone. You're with Aaron. With Aaron. Oh, I'll ride it with Aaron. Did you did you pick them thinking that me and Cooper are actually going to pick the Raiders? No. No. But <laughs> yeah, I, I thought about this game. I think I just made my picks, put my confidence. I was like, ah, I don't I was like gonna say, you, you, you Raiders kind of ass. You had a given that Asian was going to pick the Steelers. Yeah, I give it. I was I'm gonna sure pick the Steelers. Like, yeah, I was gonna say. I was gonna say it probably wasn't much of a stretch to to think that me and Coon were gonna take Pittsburgh over over the god awful Raiders well, in prime time. Let Let me give Coon a reason to post the gift then. I already have one. They won last yeah, week. I already posted the week. gift for this week. For this week. No, they are, I I can already post one this week. He fucked them, boy. He's up in the brown Brownie Bill. Yeah, you're gonna be seeing the Tomlin gifts <laughs> after Sunday night too. The Browns had that game won, and they Browned it up. I, <laughs> yeah, know, Mike Tomlin willed himself into a victory. That's what we told you was gonna happen. Was the Browns were gonna Browns it up? But give me, I don't believe I'm saying this. Give me the Raiders this week. Have fun. Yeah, have fun on the Steelers train. Who looks god? Oh, I will. I will be. At least I have a head coach. Who hasn't had a negative season, baby? Yet. Steelers train might be bumpy, it might be an ugly scene, but somehow they get to their destination. Exactly. Exactly. They might win the division, baby. That's possible. The Steelers are going to do anything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they could. Because here's the thing. The Steelers win. I mean, you could probably think. What, didn't they end up splitting with the whole division last year minus Cincinnati? I think. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. See, they, they win ugly games, Mook. They don't look great in them, but they get there somehow, baby. Just just give me the Raiders. <laughs> I'm not just it. All right, well, moving on, we got uh, to, the, to the second gift game. The Philadelphia Eagles versus the Buccaneers at Tampa Bay. I put 15 on the Eagles. That's all I need to say. I just want to say if the Buccaneers beat the Eagles, I will bow down to Baker I will not I bow down, down to Eagles. Baker Mayfield. I do not share that sentiment. I never will. <laughs> yeah, I second what Kuhn said. Uh, I've been pretty adamant on where I stand on this game. I got eight on Philly. I think that this game is a lot more competitive, though. Philly's given up the most yards in the league. I think Baker probably has a three another 300 yard game two touchdowns i'm gonna give him the brock purdy game but uh i think philly ends up winning they are more talented but i i think that this tampa team is a lot better than people expect i mean you know baker's coming in playing well mike evans is getting the ball i think you know eventually we'll see the other boy oh, i forgot his name godwin Godwin. No, I don't think we want to see him. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, you, yeah we been, do. You've been. Have, I, I think I think Mike Evans is getting you another TD this week, Coon. One can only hope. But, you know, like I said, I just think that Philly secondary has been exposed. Um, I think they win just because they're talented enough to win with the backs and the receivers, but. I think that Tampa keeps this game interesting, and, you know, Baker keeps putting a string of good games together because this Tampa team still has talent on it. That was why I was, you know, preseason. I was like, hey, I think there's a good chance Tampa's going to win the South because, I mean, they still have pieces. They still have pieces on the defense, still have, you know, pieces on the offense. The O-line is not the greatest, but it hadn't, hadn't burned them yet. So I, I have Philly winning. But I think Tampa keeps this game fun. That's why I only have eight on the Eagles. And oh man, 
all the Baker Mayfield gifts I could post if he wins that game. I have the score 27 to 17. Amazing. I have it 30 27, Philly. I have it 30 17, and I'm going to laugh so hard if this is one of the Mike Evans one pointer game or zero point games that he puts up at least once or twice a year. Why are you saying that to me? <laughs> Dude, I won't be shot. Like it's said, okay because if that happens, that means the Cardinals are winning. I'll say this I don't think it's going to be a good Rashad White week. Philly's great at stopping the run. Uh, I, I don't think so either, but I don't have much choice. Like I said, I'm 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 running Baker just because of the matchup. Um, I'm in a world where I'm playing Baker Mayfield over Justin Fields, so just let that sink in. <laughs> no, I'd rather not. <laughs> but like I said, I I think Baker has an okay game. I just think Philly comes out on top because you know they're maybe the best team in the NFC up there in the mix with Dallas and San Fran. I mean, Dallas is about to lose. Why they considered the best? Uh, with that being said, I put fourteen on the Eagles. Um, I hate Baker. <laughs> he hates Philly too. So <laughs> let me ask. Yeah, does, but does, does Baker move up in the books if he beats Philly? No. He will move up in my eyes a little bit, but I still believe that this is part of the Baker mentality. He wins. He beats a team that he probably shouldn't have beat. Then well, he beat two teams that he probably should have, honestly. Yeah, and then he plays like shit, and then we see why he's Baker. Mook, and you're using the Carolina Panther, the worst version of Baker. All of All them. Baker. Browns Baker, Carolina Baker. I can't really say Rams Baker because then he win two of two games or maybe two of three. I don't know. He's a wank. I mean, look. But I, I'm willing to give all the credit to McVay and look, say McVay's a QB quarterback. It's karma. It's karma. Look, the Browns got rid of him. Now he's popping off in Tampa as he was popping off for the Browns. He, I want to say he was popping you know, off for the Browns. He had a chance to lose. He was playing there, solid football look, for the Browns, I would we, say. We, we just got done praising Pittsburgh. Well, Baker went in and beat that Pittsburgh team. Doesn't mean he was popping off. Which is a game that, you know... I would say he's playing solid football for the Browns, not popping off. Wait, are you telling me that... Because didn't he beat him, like, the week before playoffs? Well, sometimes solid. No, they beat them in the wild card game. Yeah, but then they beat him before that, too. They might have. And you're going to tell me that that's, like, the only two losses he's had, Mike Tomlin? Get me off that game. Get me off that game. Um, yeah. I, I'm just a Baker hater. I'll admit it. I put 14 on the Eagles. I think the Eagles are still pretty good. I don't think they're as good as last year, but that's just right now at the opening of the season. I still think Philly will be fine. Probably will win division, as much as I hate to say it. Oh, yeah, especially if Dallas loses the Cardinals like they're going to. I still, I still have the points on the. I still have the Eagles winning. I just think that Tampa keeps this game interesting, and I think passing wise they look fine. I'll bring us home. Uh, did Aaron? Oh, what did Aaron put? Aaron put fourteen on the Eagles. You know, seeing that I put the least amount of confidence on this game, now I'm really rooting for Baker. Oh, um. My score is 38-28 Eagles, and I somehow had Dallas outscoring. I can't change it now. Aaron's score is 45-17 Eagles. <laughs> his highest scoring game is San Fran, and his lowest scoring team is uh, Arizona, even though they're going to put up the most points this week. Well, my lowest scoring team, we still have one more game to go. My lowest scoring teams are, I mean, it's already locked in anyways, but I actually put the Giants for my lowest scoring team. The most points, Coon, I'm sorry, I put Dallas as well for the most points. I put the Jets as the lowest scoring, Arizona as the highest scoring. Um, but, moving on to the final game of the week. the mon One of the two Monday Nighters. This is the late Monday Nighter. We got the LA Rams going into Cincinnati against the Bengals without Joe Burrow. This is technically a Super Bowl rematch. I didn't even think about that. Wait, is Burrow missing? I'm pretty sure he's missing this game. It could be wrong. 
he practiced a little bit. Uh, I think in full pads. Jamar Chase came out and said something like he hinted that he doesn't think Joe Burrow's practicing. Either way, I think he's injured. He will. I know he's still injured or re-aggravated his injury, so... Yeah. Either way, I got eight on the Rams. <laughs> yeah, I had put four on the Rams. Just... Oh, go ahead, Coon. I got eight on the Rams. I mean, the Rams have looked very good this season so far, and it's been a surprise to everyone, especially given how they performed last year. They did the And Cup going down at the beginning of the season, it didn't look good for the Rams. Akers is playing like shit. Then they got Kyron come in to give some explosiveness to their run game in week two. And Puka, Tutu, they're doing their thing. I'm a big Puka guy. I invested in Puka in a lot of dynasty stocks. And, uh, yeah, no, I actually think the Rams are a lot better of a team than we thought they were going to be initially. And, uh, since he's struggling and Bro is hurt, even if he plays through it. I don't like a hurt Burrow playing through an injury uh, against the Aaron Donald. Running, yeah, running for his life against Aaron Donald, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say. <laughs> you saw, we all saw Gio Smith's reaction to Aaron Donald. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> oh, shit. I, oh, my God. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he's the, uh, the second string, but, I mean, is there any chance we could see uh, Cowboys legendary quarterback Will Greer start? Oh, God, Will Greer is starting. I'm putting 60 on this oh, game. Oh, only if Burrow does a start and Aaron Donald kills their original backup. <laughs> oh, God, that'd be awful. Uh, I got I got two on the Rams, and I have the score being 23-21 Rams. I have the score 21-13 Rams. Well, if Burrow don't play, I'm going to have to change my score. But I had four on the Rams originally, just for most of the reasons Coon said. The Rams have been a solid team. You know, I, I never lost faith in Stafford, but, like, the rest of that team, like the O-line and stuff, um, you know, as you were saying, Cup went down. But Stafford just threw for, you know, like I said, 5,000 yards the year they won the Super Bowl. I think he might be the pass leader in the NFL right now. I'm not like 100% sure on that. It's probably between him and Kirk. Yeah, him and Kirk are maybe two of but I don't think two of threw a lot last week. Um, yeah, like Stafford looks solid. Puka looks good. Tutu looks like they actually have an offense there. And if Cup comes back and healthy, this Rams team could be could be frisky. I mean, even their defense, their younger players are are hitting, so it's technically going to have Purdy at top because he already played this week. Mm -hmm. So it says Stafford's behind Kirk and Tua, and they're all within, like, 50 yards of each other. Technically, Purdy's there because, like I said, he already played this week. But, yeah, I have four on the Rams. I just I think Cincy will get it together eventually. I don't feel good about Burrow being hurt, though. It's just they started slow last year as well. Um, I don't know. I just don't know what to think of that. If, if Burrow's not under center for that Bengals team, then all faith goes out the window. Right now, my score is 34-24 Rams. Because I, I do think this Rams team's going to go on Monday night and put up points. Um, It may come down a little bit, because if Burrow don't play, I think this game gets real ugly real quick. But... I will move my confidence around as need be if Bro don't play. If Bro does play, I still have four on the Rams because I just think they're an explosive kind of fun team, and I think so far they have been the shock of the season. Aaron put four on the Bengals, by the way. Um, I kind of flipped back and forth on this game. I didn't know if this is the game that Cincinnati's like, all right, well, we're Cincinnati. We're going to come out, and we're going to – start winning but you told me no burrow um i think i had the Rams selected before this if i didn't i do now <laughs> um i did change my score though originally my score was 23 20 with burrow playing and if burrow is out which i assume he's gonna be i changed the score to 27 to 17 rams somehow i give them like a not maybe a defensive touchdown but a point points off 
the defense in a way. And yeah, I, I I'm not gonna lie, I was fading the Rams at week one. They came in, shut me up with Seattle, and I was like, okay, maybe <laughs> maybe I can't fade them as much. And uh, they have haven't looked really that bad. The Bengals will turn to Jake Browning under center if he can't play. To be fair, he didn't look 27, 222, 2-1. Two so, I mean, when he played last week, he looked, like, passable. Um, Jamar Chase told reporters, I told him back then, don't play until you're 100% ready to play, so I don't know what he's doing. When asked if he thinks Burrow would play, Chase said, if I had to guess, I'm saying no. I'm saying no because I told him no. My answer never changed from this. Yeah, fair enough. Like I said, I... That was a chase for protecting his guy. Yeah, I... I Tyler Boyd, though, took the other stance. He says, I know he's taking a day-to-day. He looked good to me. He always looked good to me, whether he's hurting or not. But I don't want him to go out there if he's not 100%. Personally think we'll probably see him, but I think he should sit. Especially with his team being 0-2. Aaron has the Bengals up 35-17, to though. I assume that's uh, with Burrow playing. Still, yeah, that's the same. I feel like if Burrow, if we had a healthy Burrow, I feel like it'd be a lot closer. Mhm. But yeah, that's well, all the really have for this week. Yeah. Um, I feel like there was a lot of like quote unquote easier games. What games? Oh. Which means that... Yeah, like Aries on the wing against the Cowboys. Bro, you're on one. You need to wake up from the dream you're having. Look, oh, I'm gonna wake yeah, up a... Sunday morning. And I'm gonna be living the dream, baby. They play the afternoon game. Yeah, I'm gonna be living the dream through fantasy football. And then I'm gonna go live the dream through the night time, bro. Bro, you're, you're taking three L's. You're taking three L's. Um, I was gonna say, I feel like there's a lot of more layup games to call this week though and i need it because i'm the only one with a losing record in pick this that week. that was me last I week i was i was 16 and 17 overall for the year um but looking just looking at the slate that probably means there's going to be a lot of crazy ass upsets since the slate looks too easy to be true yeah like eric's not being the cowboys I know Asian wasn't doing it, but who'd you pick for Survivor Team? I picked Seattle because I feel like Seattle is one of those teams that I'm still not sure what they are. And I think that I'll just take the win now. <laughs> yeah, and then get the win them. when you feel confident. Yeah. You know, I picked New England, but... I might switch off New England, too. Well, if Mook's switching off, I'm staying on New England. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't worry, Mook, Mook takes oh, L's is still alive in the Survival Pick'em League. <laughs> did you name your Pick'em team Mook takes L's? Yeah, I did. I mean, it's not because you're switching off of them, Mook, but it's... No, nah, apparently it is. No, nah, he's not taking them. I'm going to stay on them for sure. No, no, it's more <laughs> It's more just like a... Like a... I believe in New England. I might stay on them. But Seattle does look mighty, mighty interesting with Andrew Dalton at quarterback. Honestly, you bring up some good points. Why do you think I picked them? <laughs> uh, I was, I wasn't, I didn't feel good about the uh, New England. Y- y'all, y'all I didn't want to get rid of a good team. Y'all realize that next week's primetime games have the Jets and Giants in them. Ew. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be Kansas City whooping down on. Uh, Jets. I looked ahead to see what the Thursday nighter was with Green Bay at Detroit next week. That's a very interesting Thursday night. That's a fun one. That's a fun one compared to, you know, fucking Seahawks, Giants, and Kansas City Jets. <laughs> the <laughs> other two games. <laughs> so, can I ask y'all real quick? Uh, you don't have to give me the weeks, but who did y'all go for week one and week two? Just like what two teams? Because you can't pick them again for survival. Well, I, yeah. I went Dallas last week. It looks like Coon took Washington and Buffalo. Yep. Mm. I took Washington and the Saints. I took Washington and Dallas. 
I took Buffalo while I could be confident in them. Kind of what I'm doing with Seattle. <laughs> they show you how many picks are left, and then they have the, uh, like, a percentage of the people that got it correct, and then the people that got it incorrect. I'll tell you this. I, I'm kind of looking at the Rams, too. If, if Burrow's not playing, I might jump over to the Rams. The only reason I'm doing the Seattle over the Rams is I think the likelihood of the Rams having another game where I just feel really good about is higher than Seattle. My only thing is, when it's later in the season, I don't want to pick a team that I can't, you know, like, I don't want to pick a team that I think will lose. Because I can't pick any other team. I'm like, this fucking sucks. Uh, this sucks. <laughs> I'm just but. picking teams that I think are kind of middle, mid teams. Until everything kind of shakes out a bit more. It looks like week one, Baltimore was the most popular correct pick. And Buffalo was the most... Uh, <laughs> was... Oh, actually, no, that's for uh, Minnesota was yeah, the most popular was... incorrect pick for week one. Yeah, week two, Buffalo was the most popular pick, and Detroit was the most popular incorrect pick. See, but this one don't make you, this one starts making you pick two towards the end of the season. Yeah. There's certain survivor pools out there that, like, make you pick, like, Thanksgiving and Christmas Day as well. So you only get, like, three games to pick from those days, like, two and three games. Oh, but what if you can't, like, pick a team because you've already picked them? You have to plan ahead for that. That's so trash. Well, this league don't. This survivor oh, okay. picker don't. I was like, dude, that's so that. trash. But, like, there's leagues where people are, like, keeping, trying to keep Kansas City for Christmas and then trying to keep, like, Dallas for Thanksgiving and stuff. Why would you keep Dallas? Because they're guaranteed. Why would you pick Sunday whoever uh, goes against them? I mean, you always could if you think they're going to lose. Oh, for sure they're going to lose. I mean, you know, seeing... Actually, the Thanksgiving game they got this year is at Seattle. Oh, God. Could you could you imagine li living with Diablo if they'll lose to Seattle? Oh, God. You're going to lose to Arizona and Seattle this year, dude? Jesus. They don't... Thursday, November 30th, I think that that's, was... That's week 12. Fuck it, make our whole division. Well, I, I always... I thought Thanksgiving was always the last Thursday of November. I think it's the third week of uh -huh. November. So y'all play Washington. Fuck it. Two teams I've already picked. Cowboys are gonna lose the whole division, man. You know, that would be... That'd be great. Well, it's okay, because... Dallas and Seattle play two Thursday games in a row because the night game that night is San Fran Seattle. Oh, San Fran's definitely beating the shit out of Dallas. That's well, the one team I'm very confident in. There's the Bears Viking Monday night game. <laughs> well, week five, that's a Sunday nighter. Oh, what? It's uh, Cowboys at San Fran. But, uh... Yeah, that's hopefully. I mean, Dallas going in with that one loss they took at Arizona. Yep. They're going to lose their whole division. It's going to be funny. We already, we're already one and zero in division. Dak owns that division. No, y'all are going to lose. No, division. my division. Oh, my whole division. Oh. You're going to take the L to San Fran, to Seattle, to Arizona. And to the Rams. <laughs> Dallas is twelve and four, and the only team they the only team they lost to the <laughs> Are you really confident in that? I mean, I can see it. Oh, uh, you're not confident in that. Uh, the Rams could easily be, take one off the Cowboys. The Niners definitely can take one off the Cowboys. The only two that are kind of sketch are Seattle and fucking Arizona. Arizona's definitely sketch, but they're winning this week, so I'm not really worried about it. Bro, you're on one. I'm gonna be on one when they win tomorrow, man. Not tomorrow, but Sunday. <laughs> Look, like I said, I, I wanna I wanna see it just for the memes. 
But I gotta see what Stephen A would say about that. <laughs> anyway. I told you. <laughs> that's it, that's it all for uh, this week. Yeah, you don't think we got cool. anything else to add? Do y'all have anything else to add? No. Mook does take Go L. Cardinals. Go Cardinals, I do agree. Go Cardinals. Let's go, baby. Cardinals late nation, we're flying to the station. <laughs> anyway, have a good one, y'all. <laughs> Bye. Bye.